Hello, good evening. Hello, teacher. Good evening. 
Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Thank you. We're going to wait a few minutes. Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Okay, teacher. Thank you. Nice. We're going to wait one or two more minutes. Yeah. Okay, everybody, thank you for being today in the class. So um, I hope you had a very nice weekend. And we're going to start checking about the platform as usual. So here is it, and this is the video for today. And here is the question already. So you can participate into that one, okay? Also for tomorrow, we have to finish the homework 2.8. It's going to be very easy. It's just a matter for you to check which of the options is the best one okay third party logistic provider so steps it says okay and uh, we are going to check the attendance of course we're going to do that right now ada patricia linares galdames present teacher good adriana stephanie martinez flores ana selmi chavez Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present teacher. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Present teacher. Good. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good evening. Present. Thank you. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Present. Good evening. Good evening. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present, good evening. Good evening. 
Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Ana Michelle Guevara. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Okay, so we are going to start the class of today. And uh, we're going to start with something that I had here. Ah, oh, here is it. Um, we will continue speaking about logistics, of course. So these are like the best logistics countries in the world. Of course, since this is related to discipline and step by step, of course, there are countries like Dutchland as the first one. Do you know what is Dutchland? Germany. So Germany is the number one in the world about logistics, of course, discipline and things like that. We're going to read a little bit about this one so we can discuss, okay? Uh, it says, for the second report in a row, Germany has taken the top spot in the World Bank's biennial ranking of countries in logistics performance in a row. Do you know what is in a row? It's like a, in a list. Okay, very good. It's like in a consecutive, right? Last mm -hmm. time it was, and this time again in a row. Right. I remember I remember that song Nikita. Oh. Uh, counting counting ten till soldiers in a row. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's all uh, I understand that way. <laughs> okay. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. So um let's see. Jancy, could you please read the next paragraph when it says when it measured against? <clears throat> okay. When mentioned again. Benchmark like logistic competence and skill. The quality of trade relay infrastructure and the price of international shipment, the World Bank give then Dutchland. I don't know. Okay. And um, four point two. On the scale of five, it is why it's it was following by Sweden, Belgium, Austria, and Japan. Only a handful of countries scored about four. Very good. So only just a few countries in the world have four or more in the score. So not that easy right of course look at the countries i mean germany sweden belgium austria japan of course so just a full and it says then i think what this report does is provide an excellent indicator though so is it is just one on how easy it is to get goods into a country and then how easy it is to move those goods around and also what their IT capabilities are since it looks into areas like tracking and tracing. Say Jeff Taylor, general manager of AAB's operations in the UK. Okay. And uh, well, there is like, here is like that, the graphic, right? What countries perform well on logistics? So this is about 2018. Uh, the, the index is about that year. So it's called Logistics Performance Index. That's the name on what the countries are measured about logistics in the world. So LPI, the Logistics Performance Index. And that's course countries on how efficiently they move goods across and within borders. Mm -hmm. Across and within. What do you understand about that one? It's interesting that the United States is not in the first five countries 
with good logistic process. That is so interesting. That is true. The thing is that um, there are companies that are very good. You, you will see below about companies, but regarding countries is a it's a totally different thing, right? Because it's about the whole country, about the laws, about the uh, the benefits and the way that they facilitate to companies to move goods. And well, the US sometimes is a mess. Sometimes it's, it's complicated there. Um, but there are there are companies very good in the, in the US, like Amazon. We check Amazon already, and we are going to check some other. Okay, uh, I was asking you what is across and within borders. What is that? Uh, across is one one side to another, mm -hmm. and is and within is also inside. Very good. That is it. Inside and outside. So how the countries move the products inside of the country and also from inside to outside. So it's across and within borders. Nice. And here up says the LPI scores of high income countries are 48% higher on average than low income countries. Okay, so that makes sense, right? The first one is Germany with a score of 420. The next one is Sweden with a score of five, I'm sorry, 405. Belgium with 404, Austria with 403 in Japan with 4 or 3 as well. There are other countries, like for example, India is 44 with 3.18. Uh, Côte d'Ivoire, that is Costa de Marfil, is 308. Vietnam, 327. Indonesia, 315. Okay. And it says among the lower middle income group countries, large economies such as India and Indonesia and emerging economies such as Vietnam and Cote d'Ivoire stand out as top performer. Very interesting, right? I mean, we can say that, for example, we were discussing about India, right? India sometimes is a mess, it's a big problem, but look at that, 44 with 3.18 is not that easy. Uh, also Vietnam, I mean, Vietnam is a country that is not that, developed let's say indonesia is a very nice country actually indonesia a uh, question for you what is an emerging economy in development very good that is growing right uh, i mean they are like really doing good things they are not on the top but they are moving on so that is it. Okay, and then it says, okay, let's see. Uh, Osmin, could you please read the next one? Okay, the bank's report, yeah? Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay, the bank report uh, connecting to complex, highlight a country, a country's logic performance and, and tears. Ties. That, okay, ties. Either of her economic growth and compet competitive, it says in the inefficient logistic rise, the cost of down business and reduce the potential for integration with global value chains. The toll, according uh, to the bank, can be particularly happy heavy for developing countries trying trading to compete in the global mar mar marketplace. Marketplace, very marketplace. good. So, marketplace. Yes. Uh, so that is it. Uh, this is very similar to the companies. I mean, if the, if the country has very good logistics, of course, it's going to be richer than other countries, right? So the same happens with the companies. Question for you, what is highlights? Highlights. Highlights. Good attention in a specific, uh, in a specific topic 
of, of information is um, just or yeah. maybe or maybe uh -huh. the the most relevant most relevant very good so it will be something like that the highlights are like the good thing the the best things right and the opposite of that one is low lights so these are words that you can use for example when you are creating a presentation about kpis or results or anything so you can discuss about the highlights of the company or your department or the low lights okay um could you please anna sell me read the next I guess she's kind of busy. Uh, Rose, could you please help with the next? Okay. Uh, logistic are the backbone. Yeah. Yeah. Backbone. Logistic logistics are the backbone of global trade. Say Caroline Freon, director macroeconomics, trade and investment global practice at the bank. As supply chains become more globally dispersed. The quality of a country's logistics service can determine, determine whether or not it can participate in the global economy. Very good. So it says that, I mean, logistics is the backbone. Do you know what is the backbone? It's like the one that we have in the back is yeah. the main part of the, of the body, right? So if, if you have damaged the backbone, you can do anything, right? So it's like the most vital part. It's very, very, very important. Without a it's good like logistics. Uh -huh. It's like you say the, the spinal column? The spine, yeah, you can the say spine. also the spine. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. they are synonyms, spine and backbone. So definitely without logistics, a country cannot compete with other with other countries that I mean are developing. And then it says the report says governments can use the LPI to better understand the link between logistics, trade and growth and what policies they can enact to globally compete. There are few indicators of a growing economy that are better that, than imports and exports, say Taylor. If imports and exports are going up, so is your economy. They go hand in hand. So it's linked. If you have very good production, but you don't have very good logistics, it's not gonna work, definitely. And that is for companies and that is for countries as well. And it says below, how do you measure trade logistics? So this is very important, of course, about customs, about kind of customers, uh, timelines. This is very, very important. The times that they are able to move goods within and across the country, Logistic service quality. So remember, we were discussing this for a while. Quality must be very important. Ease of international shipment. As I was telling you, the laws, how the government helps. So this is going to be very nice and smooth. Tracking and tracing, that is also very important. So, I mean, maybe you are very fast, but if the packages get lost and if customers don't receive the packages, it's not good. So tracking and tracing is very important. And of course, infrastructure. So these are the key parts in logistics for a country and also for a company. I mean, timelines, quality, shipments, that is like transportation, right? Tracking and tracing, infrastructure, that is warehouses and things like that, and the customers, okay? And of course, there is software into this one. Let's see. Um, Anna Salemi, could you please read the, the next one? What paragraph, teacher? Mark Brennan. Sorry. Mark Brennan, International Business Development Director at AEP, said to report on the lines. How companies that do business in countries that rank low in logistic performance can mitigate difficulties difficulties through the use of software that can solve the blow or even eliminate a problem. Very good. 
So we discuss, do you remember in Amazon, right? In Amazon, mm -hmm. the system, the machines, the people are important, but also technology. If you have good software, it's going to be much better and easy. What do you, do you have any opinion on this one, Anasalmi? In the finance field, mm -hmm. the software is, is very important in the process of the logistic, but um, is only one element. The process requ required a combination, the different skills for get the, how oh, uh, do you say, the get excel, excellency? Excellence. The excellency in the service. For example, in the countries on the Asia, they are, uh, uh, they are in the top related to the, the program the program service, the IT service, but required the other resources for to get um, uh, or, or to develop the, the process of the logistic because the process is complicated in my opinion. Ah, definitely. It's mm -hmm. complicated, definitely it's complicated. It's Very not good. only the software. Yeah, mm -hmm. everything is part of a system, right? Good, the next one is going to be for Ricardo. Sorry? Uh, please read the next one where it says a company cannot. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, excuse me, it's a, uh, uh, it's fact money. No, a company cannot, the first one. Ah, okay. A company can now do much uh, to impact the state of a certain country, but they can do some time to control the can oh, no. oh, sorry, circumstance. For example, we have taken a tricy software that will make it easy for the two manager where their goods are and recognized whether there will be an, an, any delay. Well, very good. What do you understand on this one? So, well, according to what it says in the paragraph, just one company can impact the whole country, right? But it can help, for example, with tracking and tracing software or any other part of the logistics so they can help the country to be better. And it says, in fact, many of AB software solutions solve problems the report may have companies concerned with, depending on what countries they do business in and where those countries ranked with the World Bank. And here are some important things, some key software includes. So this is a software for you to track logistics as you may see here. Let's see, uh, Ada Patricia, could you please read the first one here? Monitoring. Uh, monitoring and alerting. If offers next generation shipment tracking, you define the milestones in your supply chain and then get proactive alert when delays or unplanned ever occur. What do you understand on this one? Mm, I don't know, fish. Okay, don't worry, I will help you. So monitoring and alerting, that is something that the software includes. So it's going to tell you if something is going on with the package. Hey, look at this, pay attention to this. And so 
the managers or the people in charge can check and track into that one. So that is it. Let's see the next one is going to be for Carla. Customer broker integration. Customer broker integration digitizes the collaboration with your custom, custom broker safe costs, provides legal surface war and above all, accelerate the entire customer process. Very good. What do you understand on this one? Um, I think that is referring with um, all relative to cost and save to product. In a logistic service, uh, it's very important to, to customer uh, the same the product when is translated or where is moved to to side to to destination for example because there are in in this in this uh, service uh, can be uh, can be any any incident in the in the way for for this for for this uh, situation is very important to save safeguard the the product to to is very important save the cost you, you provide provide the legal servers um product very good perfect yeah i mean uh, in this case custom brokers are like the partners so you need to integrate everything in the software and in the process so everything works perfectly right so it should be that way good perfect thank you okay. the next one is for lower this okay a uh, transport and freight management this digital all operational processes in collaboration with your transport service providers, including consignment, consignment, consolidation, order assignment, the, the creation of career specific levels and tracking and tracing of your shipments. Okay, what do you understand on this? <laughs> Uh, in this in this tool uh, the software can be uh, can be decrease the the process of of transportation uh, for example uh, this software or, or these tools um can include a consignment consolidation for example or a look for order assignments uh, or a specific information about the transport uh, that the company choose um that the company choose a, a specific uh, specific barco uh, I don't remember okay that's fine actually yeah transport management and, and of course freight management is very important so it's going to make more efficient the whole process why are trade logistics important here says Caroline Freund good logistics reduce trade costs but supply chain are only as strong as their weakest link. For developing countries, getting logistics right means improving the infrastructure, customs, and skills and regulations. So 
all that is very important for a country if they want to compete, if they want to improve. Um, I'm not very sure how it goes El Salvador at this point, but what do you think about El Salvador logistics? In your opinion, we are the same, we have improved, we are like, I don't know. In, in my opinion, teacher, uh, the trade logistic is very important in our uh, country. For example, in my, in my work, uh, the Manushar is very important trade logistic. The hill office is in Belgium, and the the trade logistic is very very important because uh, in, for this tool or for this logistic, and can we uh, uh, try bring? I don't. Uh, bring uh, can be train uh, can train uh, bring the product or raw material for the the companies and if the logistic is bad uh, the product uh, can uh, don't don't uh, arrive in the specific time that you that we notify the customer for example nice that's good let me ask you uh do you feel that logistics in your company that is related to belgium is nice is smooth or is complicated is is nice but in, in this moment uh, the 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 logistic is very in, in, impredecible unpredictable yes because uh, the the boat the the ship i don't know the uh -huh, the, the the shipments is very late to to different countries uh, and the 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 taxes of the uh, transportation is is very high and and a lot of products for example don't or in this moment están escasos is it is not enough uh, for the for the uh, companies for example uh, uh, in this moment, I have a, we have a problem with a, a specific raw material because uh, a lot of companies use this raw material, and in the in the in the specific uh, or the specs about the product don't uh, don't. Complete. I don't know. I don't Accomplish. remember. Accomplish uh, of the of the companies and um but a lot of companies adapt uh, uh the product of of the Belgium offer the uh, to to them to them. Okay. That is, that is the problem, right? You mentioned two things yeah. that are very, very important. Time, that they are delayed, and taxes. So both things are yes. very important. And about the country, it's important the logistic because the sector of the logistic in El Salvador is very important. And due to a our located, located in, in the region, mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, our country is, did you say the traffic of the trade, uh, did you say the transportation 
terrestre? Land transportation. For the land transportation. And the government um, in its budget has uh, a specific uh, resources, economic resources uh, to for improve the, the road. For example, the north in our country, the we we in the past we receive a lot of money for the for millennium uh, it, it all related to to improve the logistic in the country yes the, the yeah yeah that happens sometimes i mean yeah poli politics is very important and influence and everything right and also how the government manages many things maybe some things have improved but i believe that in the the most of the situations we are either the same or a little bit worse so they they have to invest money there are a lot of things that should be done i mean if you go to guatemala or costa rica they have very good very good systems not the best the very good system mexico is very very good mexico is very nice good so let's continue. It says high and low performers. Let's see. Um, Nelson, could you please read the first part? Okay. High and low performance. The World Bank report shows a clear gap between high income and low income country in logistic reform. The score of high income countries is for the annual and average, 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 sorry, that's low income country. So wow. that is the difference, right? The difference is going to be around 48%, I mean, half. That is half. So we are kind of half of the productivity of other countries. So that is a big impact, right? Good. We're going to continue. Ophelia, could you please read the next? Across the bar, I will have six months of continuous and investing in logistics products before, especially in the art of building, infrastructuring, and facilitating, and that them explain germ. Frank, Frankish, Arbis, Economist, as the board was a, a crow and report, I could author author this the effort to modernize service. The rebellion, rebellion con, countries fast many remaining chairs I just experience as persisting I guess I bear being heal girl and love in comes a contest in the tense of logistics performance very good perfect what do you understand on that one Ophelia uh, what do you understand on that paragraph? Mm, no, teacher. no. No. Okay, it's kind of uh, the same that we were speaking. Across the board, we have seen most countries investing in logistic related reforms. I mean, many countries are investing money in this kind of situation because they know it's important, especially in the areas of building infrastructure and facilitating trains planes, Jean Francois Avis. 
economies of the World Bank Group and the poor co-author. So yeah, if you want to the country to move on to grow, definitely logistics is one of the things that we have to invest. Maybe some countries might think that is at spend, but it's not a spend, it's investment. It's totally, totally different, right? And it says, but income, population, and even economic size were not the sole determinant for a country's LPI score. Nations with access to sea ports or large international transportation hubs tended to do very well. So also, as Selmy was saying, region is important. Where are you located? So for example, Costa Rica, Panama, right? With a, with a canal that they have, they have very good economy. They are very nice, even if the government is not that good, or even if they're not doing very well in other aspects. The economy and logistics is very good because of that, right? So if you are near of a port hub, well, it's going to be much easier. And here it says Sweden, the Netherlands, Singapore, and the United Kingdom were all in the top 10 and all are home to regional offices for AAB. Uh, we're not going to read this one. Let me just check. So this is important. What are emerging trends? So labor skills shortages. Developing countries need managers. Developing countries need blue collar work. So that means that in countries like in El Salvador, we don't have people that really know about logistics. I mean, yes, we know about logistics in a basic way, right? I mean, procedures, flow charts, that is good, that is good. But we need to go beyond that one and have specialized people. And that is going to help not only the person to get a, a very good job, but improve a company, the whole company, and that is going to also improve the whole country. So if we have more people, but not just any people, if we have capable people with the right skills, that is going to be definitely much better. What is the mean teacher the blue collar workers? Uh, blue collar workers are people that have uh, studies. They have a lot of knowledge about something. Okay. Let's see, uh, Sandra, could you please read environmentally friendly logistics? Sorry, teacher. Yeah, could you please read environmentally friendly logistics? Please read this part. Okay, that's a surprise. Uh, and yeah, the, the second one. This what? one. Ah, okay. Environment, in, environmentally friendly logistics. Total logistics performance are the most likely to sit eco-friendly shipping option. This is important because two, three percent of all energy relate CO2 emission come from trans transporting. Okay, so this is also very important. I mean, many companies, they are looking to get uh, environmentally friendly logistics, meaning that they don't want to affect the country or, or the world anymore. Look at this, 23% of all energy related CO2 emissions come from transport. So that is a big impact in the climate, right? So this is linked to the first part that is uh, labor skill shortages. So in this case, for example, it says developing countries need managers. So countries like El Salvador needs people that know and developing countries need blue collar. So people that they work in the warehouses and lifting things and doing that kind of jobs. So for example, have you heard that sometimes Canada is requesting people from El Salvador to go there and work, right? Because they don't have people that 
want to work in that one. So the uh, resilience is going to be for Guadalupe. Okay, teacher. Resilient to cyber threat. High con countries are more likely that low income countries to be in increased their uh, preparedness. preparedness for cyber threat. Very good. Cyber threats. What is that? Do you what do you understand about cyber threats, Guadalupe? I don't know. Okay. Anybody knows what is a cyber threat? Limitations related to the technology. Mm, something like that. It's definitely related with technology. So do you know what is just threat? Uh, the word threat. Maybe cyber threat is like a, maybe like a, a cyber attack or something. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. That is it. So yes, as we were discussing before, um, software technology is very important with this kind of situation, but also it's going to be more open for hackers, for people that wants to do something about this. So they need to be prepared about this kind of situation. They need to be ready. And it says that developed countries, they can be more prepared than countries like El Salvador, definitely. Okay. I uh -huh. can, can kiss for the programs? Well, actually, uh, go ahead. Kiss or, or, or program? Yeah, nowadays, so yeah, nowadays, for example, sometimes, for example, you know, I, I was telling you that I work for Google. In Google, we have the password that is something that is very password. strong. Also, we have uh, one computer that is, is going to have all the accesses. No other computer in the world is going to work for me. And besides that one, I have a cyber key. So I put the key on the computer and I put my fingerprint. Okay. Yeah, like a token. So I put my fingerprint and it, it only works with my fingerprints. So that is to be ready. Access, access for, for sale, access for sale in single. Yeah, so that is going to be advanced. In the future also, um, I mean, we are talking about that companies and maybe people in the, in the future, do, we are going to have quantum computers. Quantum computers are monsters, are like servers that we are going to have in our houses. But also, hackers are also improving that kind of situations. And uh, security is going to be a problem if, if developers don't get into that right now. So that's why this kind of situation is also very, very important. Security in all levels. Security, yes. Gloria, could you please read uh, the first one here where it says some other interesting findings in the report included? Uh, this, uh, no, there is currently a labor shortage of logistic professionals in both development and developing Countries, developed countries need more blue collar workers, such as truck drivers, while developing countries seek more managed media living workers. Perfect. What do you understand on this one, Gloria? No, teacher, I don't know. Okay, perfect. Anybody has an opinion? So shortage is the keyword here. What is shortage? Anybody knows what is shortage? Who 
Okay, shortage is when you don't have enough, when you need more. So what it's telling us here is that in developed countries, they need more people that do works like nurses, uh, to pick up things, to work in farms. So people like that. And countries like in El Salvador, we need more people with uh, like managers, specializing managers and knowledge about that one. So there is a shortage of people in both in developed countries and also in countries like El Salvador. So that is maybe an advantage for the future. I believe that in the future, if you want to go and work in another country, it's going to be possible. For example, one friend of mine, he was working in Ireland and he was, he was working in a farm, you know, collecting fruits. He worked one year there and he came with a lot of money here, bought a house, bought a car, many good things. But then in Ireland, people from Ireland, they don't want to work in that kind of situations anymore. So that is an advantage if you want to go to other country and work. So the next one is going to be for, let's see, Pamela. Hello, Pamela. Uh, hello. Yeah, could you please read the second one? Uh, more, <clears throat> sorry, more countries perceive cybersecurity threats a risk to logistics. However, while 17% uh, of high income countries have increased their preparedness only 26% of low-income low countries have done so. Good. What do you understand on this one, Pamela? Um, mm, no, I really don't know. Okay, don't worry. I'm going to help you. So there is a gap. He's talking about a gap that happens between developed countries and non-developed countries. Do you know what a gap is? What is a gap? Distance or yes. difference between one compared with the other country or their situation. Very good, that is it. So a gap is like the difference between one and another when you are comparing. So in this case, we say that 78% of high income countries like Germany, Netherlands, countries like that have increased their preparedness about risks, about threats in cybersecurity. But only 26% of low income countries like Guatemala, El Salvador, have done so. So the difference is very, very high. Very, very, very high. So that is sense here that it's not good. Okay, the last part is going to be for Zulma. Okay. Uh, give that 23% of all energy related CO2 emission can be attributed to transport environmental sustainability of logistic is an important emerging trend. Emergence trends, strong performers in logistics are the most likely to seek eco-friendly shipping option. Good, what do you understand on this one? Uh, many companies need the transportation for your uh, business but uh, they can uh, use a eco-friendly option or uh, gasoline or, or short distance with uh, the customer uh, for a uh, reduce or minimize the impact in the environment. 
perfect. That is it. Thank you. Actually, that was perfect. So um, it has come to with this report that a lot of CO2 emissions in the air are coming for this kind of logistics transportation, right? And some companies, I believe not all companies, but most of the companies, let's say, are looking for eco-friendly shipping options. So they are changing those kind of ship, shipment uh, options of transportation, means of transportation. So it's going to be a little bit better and maybe uh, more efficient, right, for the future. Yeah, maybe in the future, we're going to see more electric cars or many other things like that. So it's going to be better for the environment. Okay, so as you can see here, it's the same for a country than for a company. Maybe the difference is that the country is going to avoid sometimes some products or they have different logs that are going to improve or obstacleize the way that a company does logistics. But Good logistics is good for everybody. If you have good logistics in your company, in your country, at home, it's going to be better for you. So it's huge impact for everybody. Do you have any questions about this little article? Or any opinion? Interesting, teacher. Okay, very good, perfect. Yes. Okay, okay, so we're going to make a little pause and we're going to check the attendance because it's almost nine. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present, teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. I'm here. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Ophelia Orellana Arce. Here, teacher. Good. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present, teacher. Good. <coughs> Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Present. Good. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Present. Good. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present, teacher. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present, teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Jancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Yeah. Nelson yeah. Edgardo yeah. Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Okay, okay, we are going to continue now. We're going to check a little video, but it's not that little, it's 12 minutes. Uh, but these are very good. It's talking to the pros, questions about three PLs. So as usual, we're going to see the video and then we're going to check what we understood and share opinions, okay? Lumi, and this is Shipping Things, a show about shipping things. And today we have a very special guest from ShipBob named George. George, come on out here. George? 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 Hi, I'm Jessica. 
Nancy Janae, and this is Shipping Things, a show about shipping things. And today we have a very special guest. I've got George here from ShipBob. And George, your last name starts with a W, but I've never, I've known you for a while, but I've never said it out loud because I don't know how to say it out loud. All right. Do you want to, you want to give us a teaser on that yeah, one? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty easy. Okay. It's pronounced Wojciechowski. That isn't easy at all. <laughs> Wait, Wojciechowski? Yeah, exactly. What is, what, what is that from? Uh, it's from Poland. My parents are from it's Poland. It's from Poland. And so it's a Polish okay. last name. But right. for those who don't want to completely enunciate it, you can just say George Wojciechowski I just, and you'll be close enough. I just say George. How about that? That works. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us today. And, um, and you work at ShipBob. What is your role at ShipBob? Uh, I'm co-founder and LA general manager, as well as San Francisco general manager, which uh, is coming online in the next month or so. And I've been to your LA facility. We've known each other for a little while. Yep. I actually met you when you first came to LA. You were the first person I met in LA. Yeah, uh, I was, wow. <laughs> so ShipBob is like a new kind of 3PL. For people watching who don't know what 3PL stands for, what does it, what does it stand uh, for? Technically, it stands for third-party logistics. Third-party logistics is great because you're outsourcing the warehouse aspect of your business. And warehouse life can be crazy. We're actually getting a delivery right now. <laughs> so, and trying to film. Right. First things first, let's say I'm a business and I want to work with you guys. Right. I've got my stuff. You've got a warehouse and everything. This is, for our demonstration purposes, people, this is ShipBob. They actually have real warehouses, <laughs> okay? But this is ShipBob right now, and I'm a business and I wanna work with you. How do I get you my stuff? So even before your stuff arrives at our warehouses, we have an onboarding process, okay. um, and then kind of backing it up a little bit, yeah. where we get our clients set up and yeah and get on the same page as to what inventory we're going to be receiving and in what quantities. Okay. And once that's arranged, we will work with the client to either get their inventory here from wherever it's manufactured, Yeah. or we have a pickup mechanism. So if they're located in the areas and the cities in which we operate, yeah. Chicago, New York, uh, Los Angeles, and soon San Francisco, yeah. we have uh, specific ship captains that will go out, pick up the inventory either on a daily basis, say it's like a boutique shop, Wow. or uh, a store of some kind, or even if they're just giving us all their inventory for us to warehouse, yeah. we can have a mechanism which we'd go pick that up and bring it back to our warehouse and put it into stock. Okay, so I'm the business. You've got my inventory now. Um, I've got a couple more props to help illustrate. I'm, this is me, okay? This right. is my business's headquarters, yep. all right? This is you, you got ship Bob over there. Uh, this is a truck, hold on here, okay? <laughs> So this is a truck. This is like, you know, my carrier. Okay. And it could be also ShipBob. Like, I guess what you said is that ShipBob sometimes comes right on over to where I'm at and picks up my stuff. Yep. Brings it back. Absolutely. Our vehicles are about one eighth of the size <laughs> of this truck. Your cars are like, okay, we know what he means. We'll, we'll give him that one, right. guys. Okay, so let's say you've got my stuff. Sure. Your, your tiny truck. <laughs> Picked it up <laughs> and somehow got it successfully back to ship Bob. Right. It's there, but I'm I'm assuming that tracking hundreds of items from hundreds of brands is complicated. How do you how do you do that? Yeah, and that's really when we start to get to work on what we do. Uh, when you walk into a warehouse, you'll see that we've uh, separated everybody's items and their yeah. SKUs individually by yeah. bin location. So okay. we store each individual SKU in its own separate bin. So the inventory never gets commingled with other products or other clients' products. Okay, so you've got, you've got my stuff, you've got it organized. Now, dun dun dun, a customer. This is a customer's right. house, okay? Uh, an end customer, boom. These people want stuff, right? They went to my website, they checked out, and they're like, give me my stuff. And so uh, I'm over here sitting in my fancy headquarters, which is also a box, but whatever. And, and then, and you've got my stuff. Right. What happens when this person clicks the button on my website? What do I see? And then how do you get, get, get it? How do you do it? Via the integration that we've set up with their website. Yeah. Um, the orders come into their customized ShipBob dashboard, which we build out for each individual client. And yeah. that dashboard essentially acts as an operating software for their shipping. Cool. It's okay. completely 360 degrees from tracking to invoices to, you know, uh, inventory levels. Okay, got it. So on our end, our fulfillment team sees that that order is live and yeah. it's come in. Okay. It's uh, transmitted electronically with all the different uh, facets of the order, whether it's a overnight, two-day, priority, first class. Okay. Our fulfillment team picks those orders from our warehouse. Yeah. Um, brings it over to our packaging team. Yeah. And whatever 
specific needs that that client has for their packaging, say they need custom tissue paper or yeah. this special type of box, that's already coded into the process. Yeah. So we know to fulfill those orders with that setup. That's awesome. And once we've packaged it, we run it through a price algorithm, which finds the lowest price among the carriers. When you are just shipping something yourself, like let's say, you know, when you, when you don't have the luxury of this stuff over here and you're just doing this and shipping things directly to these people, you have to figure out everything he just said, you like are figuring that out on your own. And then this, this guy over here, this is what happens now. It's leaving ship Bob, right? Like, and this is usually well, a big truck. It's yep. not your tiny, tiny yep. ship Bob But before truck. this happens, let me stop the truck driving away. <laughs> okay. Once we've created the label and have decided which carrier and how, what designation it's going to get sent out to. Yeah. Um, that tracking number gets re-uploaded back into your Shopify store, your e-commerce oh, cool. store, whatever that may be. Um, it gets uploaded, marked as fulfilled, cool. and the customer, your customer gets an email saying, hey, your order's on the way. Cool. Um, here's when you can expect it. Here's the tracking number. So okay. the orders essentially come into your shopping cart and go out via us without you having to do anything. Right, it's all right. You were sitting over here like sipping a latte and right. this all exactly. happened, right? Yep. Right, right, right. You, are you sipping a latte? Uh, we are not sipping a latte. Okay. We are hustling <laughs> to get the package. Okay, out. okay, got it. Okay, you guys are doing so many awesome things for, you know, small businesses, but like why, why the decision to allow them to uh, ship in their own custom packaging? Most 3PLs, they'll charge, you know, they'll charge uh, a price that won't make that scalable. We yeah. make it ridiculously easy. There's yeah. no additional cost for that. Okay. Within reason. Yeah. You know, if yeah, you need yeah. your tissue, a custom tissue paper or a certain color or a certain type of box or a box that's been sourced from Lumi, yeah. there's no additional fee for our clients. And so that's really, really important to the yeah. current market of e-commerce sellers, people yeah. who are doing really well, to be able to communicate the experience accurately that they're trying to uh, share yeah. and provide for their customer. I don't know if you know this, George, but I actually did a Kickstarter with like over 3,000 backers back in nice. 2012. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and when we did that, I w I'm not ashamed to admit, I didn't know that there was fulfillment options. Sure. And we suffered through a lot of things <laughs> that I don't need to get into. But my question is, why don't young companies know that there are options like you guys? like? What, what's going on there? Yeah, frankly, Jesse, there aren't a lot of options out there that are that appeal to the new generation of e-commerce sellers. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of 3PLs that have been in business and are maintaining their legacy clients, but their yeah. solutions are, aren't necessarily tailored to these young companies. Okay. That's what we're trying to change. So we're trying to change um, that by creating a fulfillment model that's geared toward the specific needs of this generation of e-commerce sellers. People just starting out, people who need to uh, you know establish their systems from scratch. And are stressing that connection to their clients. They okay. want to be able to communicate through their packaging, through the way that they're they're creating and wrapping okay. their product yeah. to their clients. And oftentimes that's not a solution that's available to them. I'm doing this for two and a half, three years now. One of the things that we see uh, that is super important is to plan this out in the very early stages, not just for the immediate, right. but also for three months down the road, six months down the road, right. a year, Scaling. two years down the road. Yeah. And we try to yeah. be that partner to the e-commerce companies that we're partnering with. If I'm over here sipping my latte, starting my business, and I'm trying to maybe design my business even to be ready for fulfillment, sure. what should I be doing? Like, do you have any tips for me? What we found is that a lot of our clients, uh, for the first three to six months, bootstrap it themselves. Yeah. They'll have their friends do it. They'll do it out of their living room. They'll do it out of their office, sure. wherever, you know, we work or whatnot. Exactly. Um, after about six months to two years, there's been a response to their product. Yeah. They know they have a business now. They know that they have an idea that people are responding to. Mm -hmm. So at that point, it's critical to find a fulfillment partner for the next phase of your business. Yeah. Can you help me pinpoint when I should reach out or when I should start exploring things? I think you should do it before you even launch. Okay. There's plenty of businesses that we're currently working with and have worked with in the past that reached out to us three months, six months before they actually sent us their product. Don't be shy, reach out early, early, even if you're not ready, because you guys are gonna be honest and say, hey, like you might as well keep doing this for a little bit longer. Here's the tipping point for yep. when you should be sending us your inventory. Yep. And that way I have a plan from the outset, as opposed to reaching out to you when I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to ship this stuff. Exactly, yeah, it's yeah, most yeah. important thing is to come up with your a thorough list of questions and don't make your decision until you've had all of those questions answered yeah and not just with your fulfillment company but with your, like your custom box company or yeah. other partners in your supply chain yeah. 
view it as a partnership and get all the information you need from that partnership before going live with it. Do you have any stories um, that help people avoid mistakes that you think are too common or just didn't need to happen? Some of the issues that entrepreneurs run into when they don't do their full research and all the variables involved yeah. in shipping and fulfillment, um, oftentimes they won't know the difference between the different tiers of shipping rates yeah. offered by the clients. Sometimes the difference is like $5 a shipment or something. More, more. Sometimes more. it's like 30, 40%. Yeah. Because right. that could so blow their unit anything. economics. They could go Absolutely. from making money on an order to losing money on order. Yep. And I would come to you and I'd be like, George, why? Like, George, I'm losing money every right. time you ship. And you would be like, Jesse, you should have researched dimensional weight shipping. And I'd be like, no, George, why? But if it'd be better to just prevent that in the first place. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oftentimes, another issue that I've seen is customers have their product and they expect to sell one product at a time and so they figure oh. out their shipping for that one product okay they find out that people are ordering two three and four and okay. that's a whole new box yeah and they have we haven't worked with them or they haven't come to us and said hey let's find the optimal way to ship this so we can okay. keep the dimensional weight as low as possible okay. and compact it but also make sure that the product maintains the integrity in transit yeah. and another issue i think is then researching what the insurance and the claims process is okay now, it doesn't happen often yeah but packages do get lost so like uh it's like this box yep. is in this truck, okay. and then this driver's like crazy, yep. and then it's just like, you know, that one gets lost, right? And then this this, this guy's like, I never had that one. Exactly. I never, yeah. As unfortunate as it sounds, what Jesse just demonstrated will happen at some point. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us. This is really fun. It's been a and you guys are running incredible companies, so I really appreciate you joining us Thank today. You. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. as usual. So, what did you understand? That's the first question. Uh -huh. About the, the questions. <laughs> 3 p.m. <laughs> um, yeah, the the interview had like two parts, right? What is your business? What is 3 p.m.? What do you do? And then some tips and common errors. What else do you get, Rafael? Uh, um, for example, uh, he he talked about the. Uh, for example, the ventas, no, sorry. How do you say ventajas or benefits? I don't know. Advantages. Uh, advantage, uh, uh, here, higher the, the, the shipping service, uh, shipping service. And, I don't know. I don't remember, but I understand uh, a lot of, but I can't explain. Okay, but that's good that you got a lot of ideas. That is very nice. Perfect. Who else is? A TPN is uh, shipping teams in con Contain inventory and warehouse and mention uh, packages mm -hmm. and, and experience and, and advantage uh, shipping and uh, planes. Okay, very good. Yeah, actually, it was about that one. The first part was about what is a 3PL, what is the company doing, what do they do, right? So, any other? For me, it was interesting the different style of explanation of the girl, <laughs> of the boy, because the girl, the, the style is more... Uh, Friendly, maybe if the explanation is according to the, 
her tools, the, the, and the boy is playing uh, better, but the style, uh, in his style is serious, mm -hmm. but uh, the explanation, it was clear. It was clear related to the, the, the process of 3PL and the old question that the, the girl uh, asked, mm -hmm. uh, he answered complete the, the explanation. It was clear about the process. In the general, because it's a lot of information for my mind, teacher. Sorry. <laughs> I love, yeah, <laughs> don't worry. But that was fun. I mean, that happened. I mean, the uh, the girl was like friendly because she was the interviewer, and he was like serious, of course, because he's the manager, right? He is like, what we do is this and this and this, whatever. Okay. Any other opinion? Any other comment? I try to understand, but. Oh my God, sometimes he speaks so fast. <laughs> but I understand some words because he he was talking about website. The order, the order is coming for the operator. He he speaks something about the overnight that the 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 how do you say oh my god the package of the client maybe it's a priority and is 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 it isn't overnight it's 25 hours he was talking about warehouse um uh, individual skills organized customer website stuff headquarters oh my god he speaks of us yeah yes uh, we were discussing one time do you remember that Yes, it's important grammar in the way, but now also we need to speak a little bit more fluent, right? Because that's the normal way. I mean, that's the normal way that we're going to yes. speak, right? Yes. It's, it's important, that one. Uh, perfect. Yeah, it, there were many things in the video that it was interesting. The first part, as we were discussing, is about what is a 3PL. What do they do? They say they have a warehouse. They have some trucks and pick the merchandise to the stores and bring them and when somebody places an order they do everything right there is a system that sends you an email yes your place was was your order was placed and you are going to receive this product in two days and you can track it here so they have the whole system right that was very interesting and uh, also he said at the end actually that maybe sometimes some packages get lost that they do a very good job but I mean, sometimes that happens, right? Of course, um, as usual in the US, if something gets lost and you call, they send you another one, right, for free. So that is the normal way they do it. It's very interesting, some questions that she asked. Do you remember when she said, I mean, what happens with new companies? New companies, they don't know that you exist, that there are 3PL companies. Uh, why? why? Why is this happening? I mean, I'm a new company and I need help, but I don't know why. Why I don't have any information about this one. And he said, the thing is that sometimes the rates and uh, it's, it's not tailored for new companies or small companies, but we are trying to change that one, right? So we have different options for small companies and different uh, situations. So so you can you can get in and make business with us. So that was very interesting. And also I really liked also the way that he said that, uh, she said, when, when can we meet the company and ask questions and be ready for this kind of uh, partnership? And he says, even before you launch your business. So if you are planning, if you have the plan only, to produce something, to have a, a product in the market. So you have to do the, everything. And one of that most important thing is to get 
somebody to help you with the with the logistics, right? So they can they can tell you, for example, in mind for the pricing, maybe you say, mm, I'm going to give this at ten dollars, but the rates are different. And if you have this meeting with the three PL, they will tell you the pricing is this. So you think, right? Mm, maybe I have to increase this two dollars more, or maybe I can decrease a little bit more. So it's important for everything. Every piece of the business is important. And logistics is one of the most important. Having a nice partner that they know what to do is going to make your business more successful, definitely. Good. Teacher, and, go ahead. In that part, I, I understand that uh, when you have a business, you have to evaluate the best shipping options keeping in mind how the product uh, will be transported. Definitely. I mean, uh, it's not the same to transport fruit or ice cream or cloths or gifts, flowers. I mean, everything, everything is different, right? So uh, of course you need to evaluate everything whenever you have a business or when you are in part, when, when you're part of a company and you are in charge of the logistics. So you need to evaluate many, many things. Good. Any other comment or question before we move on? Teacher, I understand that the location, the warehouse, warehouse location is outside cities. Mm, I didn't remember oh. that one, but it's probably, it's probably because sometimes they, since they, they have their own trucks, remember that they need space. And sometimes it's difficult to be in the middle of the city. Uh, of course, if they are outside of the city, they should have planned road <coughs> and many things there. So definitely it should be something like that. Good. We are going to continue then. <laughs> so how to select the right 3PL partner. So that is also important. It says, do you need external help to select a 3PL provider? A consultant or consultancy knowledgeable in the domain could make the selection easier. So that happens sometimes. Sometimes you say, what do I do? How am I going to hire the nice person, the nice company? But if you don't know, you can, you can get a consultant. We're going to read some things here. So we check what can we do so we can select the right partner. Adriana, could you please read the first one? Yes, teacher. Define and document your 3, 3PL re requirements in supply chain and the rest of the spec and state the priority. Also, sit down, sit down what logistical responsibility will remain in house. Perfect, what do you understand on this one? Mm. In this point, it's very necessary to define and document a 3PL three, three, three and the business and transportation and the, I, I don't remember. No, but remember another 3PL. Okay, but that was pretty good. Uh, and uh, the, go ahead. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Mama. Uh, also, uh, uh, de define and uh, describe the uh, uh, what or who responsibility or what responsibility the logistical. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yes, definitely. As any, anything that you are going to do in a business, you need to document, right? So make a definition of what you need and what they offer. And then you can match. That will be. So you need to, to have everything clear on what you need and what they are offering and uh, what will be the best option for you. The next one is going to be for Ricardo. 
Hello. Yeah, could you please read the second one? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Second. The It's second a one. Check. I know. Have an internal. Had, ah, okay, okay. Had, ah, espérame que casi no veo esta cosa. Is a, es a, es a nefón. Ah, okay. Eh, okay, espérame, espérame. Yo voy a dar vuelta. Hoy sí. Okay. Is a have in internet multifunction the team to both sell it I work with the three PL partner is as a logistic partner impact multiple stack como se dice esa stakeholders stakeholders sorry uh, there will also be which a uh, sector and here complacy it's ever every Concern is in, y esta palabra la dije la vez pasada, es involved. Involved, involved, sí, for the star. Very good. What do you understand on this one? Okay, anybody? Okay, this is kind of easy actually, to have an internal multifunctional team. So you have to have a team that is going to select the 3PL, take the decision, and also the ones that are going to work with the 3PL because sometimes they, they might have some questions about the procedures or many things and get them involved from the very beginning, from the start. So whenever you are going to do that one, everybody has to be involved in this process. The next one is going to be for Pamela. Um, check if the TPL provider has the capacity to upscale operation if, if and we need it. What do you understand on this one? Oh, well um, maybe if, um, to understand if the uh, well is the logistic is necessary the um, putting another uh, in another level, level the operation if the if necessary or not. Uh, yes, actually, this is the key word, and this one is going to be upscale. Sometimes, uh -huh. for example, in Black Friday or in Christmas, maybe you need more, more. I, mean, I don't know, more transportation, more space more in the warehouse. Demand. Exactly. So it's it's going to be the three PL able to upscale at any time, at any moment? That is one of the most important questions. Jancy, could you please read the next one? Hello, Jancy. Okay, not here. Uh, Sandra, could you please read the next one? Okay. Uh, can you provide offer customization? The one size fits all template may not, not always be the ideal solution for your business. What do you understand on this one? Um, Uh, what meaning template? Um, template is like something that is really? for all the situation. A template is like, a, how can I say, a standard that you are going to a accomplish. Standard. Uh, in mobilis. Uh, yeah. Politics. Politics. 
Uh, no, template might be in anything. I mean, for emails. In for, general. In yeah. general. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe the, pro the procedures, uh, I don't always uh, decide for, for, for all pro providers. Uh, or, or your business, or your business. Very good, that is it. I mean, sometimes your product, as we, as Michelle was saying, sometimes depending on the product, you need special transportation, special temperature in the warehouse, special conditions. So is the 3 p.m. And, and products uh, and shipping and production. Yeah, definitely. So is the 3PL provider able to give you those conditions? That is it. Even if they yeah. have other other um, partners, you sometimes need something that is very specific. Condition different in, in organization. That is it. So not all the products, not all the companies are the same. Good, perfect. Uh, the next one is going to be for Rafael. Can, can the provider, yes. No, does the potential. Does your potential partner offer solutions in multiple segments of the supply chain or does it focus on only particular areas and solutions? If your organization's needs are very specific, you may want to look for niche, niche 3PL providers. Otherwise, the more solutions you get out of a single provider, the more seamless your supply chain will be. Very good. What do you understand on this one? Um, About the, the, I don't know what type the, the people exist or there are in the, in the, um, for supply chain, for example, there are people offer so, solution in multiple segment and uh, there are people's needs uh, offer uh, a, a very specific solution and the company should, should choose a better option uh, about the company needs. Perfect, that is it. I mean, uh, depending on your need and what are you looking to do, is the 3PL going to solve all your issues or just part of them? So are you going to need another company to be partner with them? It's going to be this instead of 3PL, a 4PL. So things like that, right? So uh, you need to ask the questions about the whole procedure. So you, um, you're sure that everything is going to work the way it should be. Good. The next one uh, is going to be, go ahead. What is the pronunciation, Nietzsche? Nietzsche, like that. Nietzsche. Yeah. Okay. The next one is for Zulma. Um, ask for client preference and check on them slowly. An existing client feedback can be the best indication of the 3PL provider's performance and reputation. This is a good one. What do you understand on this one? Uh, you can receive a, a feedback Back about your um, if you uh, doing a better uh, logistic or or not, you can ask our uh, your client of your provider or your uh, any stakeholders in your process. 
if you need the do a change or okay. a modify the process. That is it. I mean, this is uh, something that is very, very interesting. You can see. So sometimes when you want to select a partner, it's a good idea to go and ask other clients that they have had. So is it good? It wasn't time. What about the rates? What about the pricing? If you ask another company that is a client of that 3PL, you might have a very good, a very good feedback. And then you will be able to choose the right partner for you. So that is a good idea. It's nice. Teacher, teacher uh, part D 3PL is necess necessary invested a clay. Invested a, a client, you mean? Invested. Uh, 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 reference. Uh, yeah, references are very important. That, that is with any yes. business. I mean, we do that here in El Salvador, right? You ask like a friend, did you go to that restaurant? Is it good? Uh, is the food good? Is yes. the service good? Is the price good? So the same might be happening. The, in the, the clients. Very good. That is it. It's a very good idea. Okay, and the uh, last one is going to be for Ophelia. Okay, teacher. I force a client's a reference. Hey, no, the last one, please. So check the company's financial health. Check the company finances. I heard you visit this a short. I know I fast on his effort a tour tour moon and risks because you three P L father. I can give her on the pro promising solution. Good. What do you understand on this one? Mm. Not this. Okay. Don't worry. That is fine. So this is very common in the U.S. when you are making business for a lot of money. When you have partners that are going to, for example, uh, if you are going to move a million products every month, this is a good idea that some people do. Oh, so show me your financial reports. Um, it's not that common in Salvador. And also I believe in my opinion that it's kind of tricky because a company can show you something, but maybe in the next month, everything can change. I mean, for me, it's maybe not that that important. Of course, money is money and it's very important. I mean, but it's better for, for us to check about procedures. The other aspects I believe is are better because this can change. This can change from one day to another one. Uh, or sometimes they don't show you the whole thing, right? The whole picture. So this for me is not a good idea, but it's possible you can ask that to other. So these are aspects for you to when you want to choose a 3PL. Let's move on. Okay, uh, this is like our little review. Do you remember the three R's in logistics, right? So let's see, sell me what is right product? The seven right, right product. What is that? What do you remember about you. it? I don't remember. You don't remember. Anybody wants to help someone? Don't worry. Right product. The correct product? Yeah, it's to have the correct product. But what is the meaning of that one? These are the seven hours in logistics, right? Yes, it's have the product in the right conditions. That is it. <clears throat> Moving so, with the best options is um, is by by 
oh my god <laughs> by plane or by ship um, taking care in that the product um, arrives to the warehouse or also to the customs in good conditions that is it and i mean yeah and, and that the appropriate uh, oh my god the appropriate um, i forgot the word <laughs> okay but uh, it, that's it <laughs> very good thank you yeah to i mean maybe you have very nice logistics very nice partners everything is fine but if the product is not good it's not going to work so you have to think very well about the product the product that you are going to sell distribute or whatever so you have to have the right product so the customers are happy with that one at the right price of course okay uh, right customer osmin what do you remember about the right customer okay, sir, the right customer is important uh, because no delivery product uh, not wrong okay very good perfect so remember that we were talking about here about a segment where mm -hmm. what is, is going to be my objective my people that you is have to you have to you have to do a, a previously market research research to know what is your target of the market that is it so depending on that one is going to be the distribution or the marketing many things depend on this on the right customer so these two are linked the right product but for whom for the right customer who is going to purchase my product so that is very important. You need to take in consideration that one. Let's see, lower this. Right time. What do you remember about the right time? About teacher? Right time. Right time. Um, right time uh, eliminate delay or uh, the 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 right of the product um, might or or must must be in the specific time that is it very good perfect let's remember that time in logistics is money right so one hour is going to impact our business. So the right time, meaning that you are going to have, you plan the route, you plan the kind of transportation, you plan everything. So the customer is happy and also we save some money. So we get more profit. Okay, uh, let's see. Sulma, right place. Uh, right place means where do you offer your product? You need to decide if you you own a sell the product or you need a wholesaler or retailer or you you need to choose the place for the for offer uh, the product. Perfect. Actually, that was perfect. So you need to choose where is going to be your product distributed. So it's going to be with a wholesaler, with a retailer, directly with the stores. You are going to have your own stores. Perfect, that was it. The right condition, Nelson. Uh, we are not able to hear you, we don't listen to you. Thank Me, you. teacher. Sorry. Sorry, teacher. Okay, uh, uh, right condition is when when the in the product or the place is is a good uh, in good place. So when um, all uh, delivery and the, the the production is good good condition because it hides high condition is for me 
Very good, that is it. I mean, the packaging, the label, the way that the product is going to be transported, right? Because it's got, it has to be a, a, not only in time, but also with the, in a nice condition there. So, and the product inside, of course, should be in the right condition. Good. Right quantity, uh, Michelle. Um, I think that is that uh, have enough product to, um, how do you say, cover it? To cover. Cover uh, the customer demand. Very good, perfect. Uh, look at this, uh, the, this one says right quantity. Do you remember that we were saying that we don't need too much? Because to keep a lot of product in a warehouse is money, but not too little. Because we don't want to tell to the customers, we don't have. I'm sorry, come next month. So that is very important. How much do I need to have? Not that too much, not that too little. Good. The last one, uh, the right cost is going to be for Carla. The seven rise of logistic. Yeah, the number seven is yours. Right cost. Do you right remember? Cost. Do you remember what is this about? No, no, teacher. Okay, don't worry. Anybody can help, Carla? Maybe teacher that the rate of the service is necessary the reasonable for um, to get uh, customers for for you see. Uh, the the rate the fees is necessary to to in general the price is important that according to the service very good perfect yeah remember that logistics is everything about money you are always trying to improve to improve the time to improve the condition the quantity but you want to reduce costs. That is always uh, what is going on here in logistics. Of course, the objective is to have more profit. That is the final objective. Good, you remember, that is nice. So any questions about the seven hours? Okay, also we were talking about the um, the kind of logistics, right? Let's see, um, I'm gonna ask, Rafael, do you remember what is a 1PL? Cargo owners? Yeah, those, those are like a, an example, but do you remember what is a 1PL? I don't remember very well, but um, for it, I think that it, it is uh, like service express or I don't know. Okay, for don't worry. Example, I'll go ahead. Like, like a uh, I think, I don't know, uh, Urbano Express, DHL, I don't know. That's... Mm -hmm. Well, actually that is more 2PL, but that was an idea. So anybody can help Rafael? Me teacher. Go ahead, Rose. If I, if I have a farm and I, I sell chicken, I, I go to the customer, the client and I, on my by myself i i give the product that is it perfect so that means that you do everything yeah. you don't have 
anybody else helping you. You do the whole thing and you are the one who go to the customer and said, here's the product. There you are. Right. Like, like mandaditos. The problem is that mandaditos is something extra. It's, it's uh -huh. an outsourcing. In the one period, we don't have any outsourcing. So if you produce something, you also sell it. You transport, oh. you do everything. I sell. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You do the whole process. All the procedure is made by you. That is it. Okay. Good. So now the question, the next one is going to be for Ada Patricia. Do you remember what is a 2PL? No, teacher. No, remember. No, remember. Okay. Anybody can help Ada about 2PL? Me. Okay. Is when you contract to other company, for example, transport, you only in charge of production and they uh, in charge of the, the transportation to the client. Very good, that is it. So this is like mandaditos. This is like a FedEx, for example. I mean, when you produce, but you don't deliver. You hire other company to deliver that one. So that is 2PL. So there are two uh, parties involved, okay? Two party logistics, good. Okay, the next one, the 3PL is for Lourdes. Mm, in 3PL, uh, we contract a company logistic. And the company logistic ensures about all the process of uh, carry the product until the customer. Very good, perfect. So this one is going to be warehouse and transportation and delivery, right? So it's going to yes. be everything that is involved about the logistics is going to be involved. Yes. Good, perfect. The next one, 4PL, is going to be for, let's see, Gloria, do you remember what a 4PL is? I am not teacher, I don't remember. Okay, anybody can help uh, Gloria? Teacher, I, I remember that 4PL is when um, business logistic carrier yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Definitely includes the career. Definitely, it's included here. Uh, anybody else's? Okay, don't worry. I will tell you. So this also includes the logistics system. I mean. The other one, the 3PL is the warehouse and then the transportation. But for a 4PL, a company comes and designs the um, system, it brings the machines, uh, the software that you are going to use. So you can actually not only produce, but you distribute everything to send that to the warehouse and then the distribution. So it's going to include the design of this and the control of the logistics itself. So it's going to be software. that part. Exactly, software and many, many other things. Good. The last one, the 5PL uh, for Pamela. It's like um, um, optimization um, and everything. Oh. Every operation that we put it uh, before operation Actually, logistic operation. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That is it. Actually, remember that this one. The difference is that is going to include also the production. So you are going to have a company that is going to help you also with the production, then the design of the logistics, and then the rest that is going to be warehousing 
and uh, distribution, transportation, everything is included here. So the 5PL is the whole thing, all the package, okay? Very good. Any questions about this? No questions. Clear as our chatter. I know that, I mean, sometimes we repeat some topics, but it's for us to remember, right? Is um, there are topics that are not difficult, but I know that since you don't know anything about it, sometimes it's going to be a little bit difficult to remember. That's why we sometimes repeat some things. Uh, but I try to bring something new as well. Okay, so that is something that I try to. Um, how was your weekend? I was going to ask you that one. I, it was kind of dangerous, right? This weekend, I don't know, it was kind of strange. But everything was fine where you live? Yes, no, maybe. Yes, teacher. Uh, well, uh, still now, maybe, yes. <laughs> I don't know tomorrow. I believe that now is a little bit better, right? I don't know if today was going on something, but I was checking the news. I was outside, you know, to be honest with you, when I was checking the news and I said, oh my goodness, what is going on here? Um, yeah, let's see how it goes. Very good. But everything's in fine. Some, in some places, yeah, every, well, to me, yes. But in some places, the, the situation is more... Um, dangerous or di uh, difficult. Yeah, that is true. There are places that are kind of dangerous. Or sometimes, you know, sometimes maybe where you live is fine, but you need to, when you go to your job, sometimes you have to pass through certain places, right? So uh, be careful on that situation, okay? Be careful and think, make a little bit of logistics, plan your route, right uh, commute with some other people if it's possible that is a good idea if you work from your home that is wonderful that is amazing actually i work from my home right now but um yeah if you are traveling also take in consideration that one my advice is uh, logistics as well as part of that one if something's going on what other road may i take that is something that we we need to take in consideration or if something is going, I mean, anything might be happening, right? So just be careful on that kind of situation. Okay, any questions about the class of today? Mondays are difficult, right? Okay, so I'm going to check the attendance and we are going to finish. Remember to be careful on everything and uh, it was a pleasure to be here with you today. Have a very good night, uh, dreaming English, and uh, let's check the attendance, okay? Let's see how it goes. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present, teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present, teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here, teacher. Good. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present teacher. <coughs> oh, I forgot. Lourdes for you is the 101 today. Okay, okay thank you. Let's continue. Uh, Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Present. Good. Rafael Ernesto Gonzalez Ventura. Present. Good night. Good night. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodriguez. Present teacher. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. 
Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present teacher. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Perfect. So my friends, it was a pleasure to be here with you. Have a very good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow. Okay. Good night, teacher. Okay. Good night, tomorrow. everybody. Bye. 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 See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, hello Lourdes, how are you? Hello teacher, very tired. Me too, you know. But the good thing is that <laughs> this is the final part and then we are going to sleep a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the last week uh, for me was very heavy because for the case of my grandmother, but now, uh, I incorporate to my work and the work accumulate, but oh. I, I try to, to uh, level up. To level up. To uh, level and in my work and, and the, the, this day was very, very tired for me. Yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, Mondays are very difficult, but now when you go back to the office, yeah, I know it's mm. right. And how is your grandmother now? Uh, grand, and now my grandmother was better because the uh, recuperation uh, was very fast because um, the operation uh, was conventional. Um, uh, we 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 want the operation was with laser for the age of the grandmother, but the calculus uh, was very big, and the laser operation don't apply in that case. Uh, but it my grandmother. Uh, the recuperation, uh, thanks of God, uh, was very, very fast. Very good. I'm very happy that she is now recovering Thank and you. that you are back to normal. Well, at least tomorrow you are going to be a little bit normal, right? Yes, yes. Uh, tomorrow, uh, my my grandmother act accomplish uh, eight days uh, after the operation and eliminate the puntos ah, of okay. the operation. The stitches. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Yeah, but that is good. If they are going to yes. remove the stitches, it's going to be getting normal very soon. She, yes. she needs to be careful, of course, but now it's... Yes is finishing the recovery so that's the only thing that she needs to do good okay uh, a question for you i know that uh, you have experience in the one-on-one so the first question is 
how do you feel that you are moving with English? I mean, do you feel that you are learning, that you are advancing? Uh, yes, I feel learning, but my progress, I feel is slow because uh, the vocabulary for me, I need to improve. Uh, I recognize uh, more, learn more words for me um, to talk more easy. And, and it's my, my big problem in this moment. Okay, so you believe that you need more vocabulary? Yes, yes, more vocabulary. Um, in, in, my, in my case, I need to learn English because uh, for the, the head office, uh, always uh, send the document in English. And for me, uh, is complicated in some cases. And I need, bueno, I, I, well, I, pro, I propose a look for more words to learn uh, for me. Yeah, actually, that is a very good idea. Uh, and uh, something that you can do about that one is to read. Try to read mm -hmm. little stories, not that complicated something that are very mm -hmm. basic but you are going to find new words there and whenever you find new words uh, do not go to the translator go to a dictionary you can use dictionaries mm -hmm. online because in the dictionary mm -hmm. you are going to see all the meanings of the words so remember that mm -hmm. in english some words you can use the, them in different ways in many different ways and also mm -hmm. you are going to find synonyms and antonyms so that is a very good experience if you want to get more vocabulary. And of course, the next step might be to, to try to use the vocabulary. So that would be mm -hmm. the next step. But the first thing that you can do is to, to start reading a little bit and check some words in a dictionary. Okay, okay. Uh, for this reason, teacher, uh, I, my, my camera is off because <laughs> Uh, I I take my my online English class in my cell phone, and in my cell phone I have a link traductor. In, in this translator, uh, the words are a lot, and don't have synonym and antonym but uh, I look for dictionary uh, better for learn more words in English. Very good. That is a very good thing that you can do. If you continue Teacher, doing that. And uh -huh. what, I'm sorry, what recommend dictionary or application for uh, improve my English? Because, uh, I I have a Duolingo, but uh, the this app don't in my case it's stressful because uh, the the levels are very uh, long for advance, and I need uh, learn more more words for example okay uh, yes well you can use there are many dictionaries the ones that i use are the webster dictionary and also the cambridge those are very good dictionaries with uh, okay. it's, it's very easy to understand i mean they are in english full english right uh, but they are easy to understand and there are many they they, they have also uh, for example you are looking for a word there are some sentences with examples so that is a very good thing Oh, okay, okay. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Do you have any questions before we finish? Anything related to anything that we have checked? Um, for the moment, teacher, only uh, my my doubt was uh, I don't well understand 
what is the different uh, difference between 5PL and 4PL okay. because a uh, 4PL I understand that include a packaging right because the packaging uh, warehouse. But, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, the 3PL includes warehouse transportation, right? Uh -huh. The 4PL yes, includes yes. a company that comes and designs the logistics. So they come and bring systems, machines, and things like that. And the 5PL includes the production as well. Mm, the production. That in, in my case, my, my, my company... Uh, I believe that 5PL because a warehouse and we decide what vacation and what a system, for example, logistic apply in in the with with my with the with our customers. Okay. Yeah, that might be the, the situation, but that is good because you will be able to practice some things, right? Mm -hmm. okay. okay perfect so Lourdes was a pleasure I'm very happy that your grandmother is fine and thank we'll you, see you teacher. tomorrow thank you teacher good night good night